the policies continue to show um, in any human condition a disregard for, for human life that is disproportionately affecting marginalized communities. We will build the wall. We've Immediately after Donald Trump was elected, we saw one of the first executive orders he had signed was his Muslim travel ban. This came after when he was on the campaign trail and said, Islam hates us. And we saw he put those words into action, where he banned Muslim immigrants from several Muslim-majority countries. We've seen the ban expanded. We saw more Muslim-majority countries, predominantly African countries, that were added to it. We've also seen his immigration policies when it comes to family separation. We saw egregious images of children being ripped away from their parents immigrants being put in cages, reporters and politicians were barred from seeing the consequences and the conditions in which immigrants were put at. And that also comes again following the president's rhetoric and calling immigrants and Mexicans in particular rapists and criminals, uh, calling Africans um, who come from, you know, quote, whole countries. And then you get to situations that are much more directed um, you know, at the border and the interior at the border walls is a lot of money. I think even a lot of people who are very much in favor of border enforcement think of this is not, this not the best way to spend the money. And then there's also more of a deputization of um, street level officers uh, in the federal government to arrest um, people who they want to arrest. There were attempts to cut back on DACA, uh, attempts to revoke TPS, temporary protective status for Hondurans, El Salvadorians, and Haitian immigrants. It has become more difficult to uh, immigrate to the country legally. When we're talking about how much harder it is for asylum seekers to prove their credible fear and to prove that they're fleeing persecution and war and they just want safety and stability and that we're deporting these people back uh, to some of these countries. Now there's been a slowdown in uh, immigrant processing, and I should add, this has been a slowdown in naturalization of new U.S. citizens. And so these are all statistically um, verifiable as, 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 as reductions. The policies continue to show a disregard for, for human life that is disproportionately affecting marginalized communities, communities of color, Black communities, Muslim communities, Latinx communities, Asian communities. And these are policies that are, are still being upheld till this day. The list is really endless so when we're talking about anything from immigration to domestic policy um, that reflects on how these policies impact marginalized communities and their day-to-day -day lives. One of the greatest threats, actually, that has been created through the Trump administration's policies on immigration has been to make it uh, difficult for the talent pool in the United States to continue, whether it's with regard to entrepreneurs or with regard to scientific talent, um, or whether it's regard to just playing people who are willing to learn and to roll up their sleeves and do hard work. We've seen so many people now coming to be called essential workers. And, and some of those essential workers are actually have no way to lawful status in the United States, no line to stand in. And so um, I think it's going to be important to really rethink what the relationship is between what the economy needs to run. The pandemic has exposed a lot of fault lines in American society, and nowhere is that more true. And who does the work, who takes care of our children, things of that nature. It's going to require an openness uh, to immigrants. But the fact of the matter is that um, if we can figure out a way to share the wealth that immigrants bring to this country, then they only add to the economy as a whole.